All right, so Luke and I have just played our first game of the old world. We did a couple of, like, practice games off camera. Two turns, maybe. Yeah, just a little practice yeah. phases, I guess. And then we actually just played our first game. Uh, obviously, no spoilers. But I do believe uh, I love this edition. Steve has already recorded 18 hours of reviews covering the 16 playable factions. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss them as they release over the next couple of weeks. However, if you do not want to wait for the faction you want to hear about, join the channel and become a supporting member. Every video is available for the channel members this instant. No, like, no spoilers at all? Like, not what the mission was, not what the forces were? No, we can talk about that, because that'll, that'll be out yesterday when awesome. Wargaming. It was uh, the first major narrative scenario in the Bretonian Arcane Journal? Yep. Is it, in both of, is, it, is it in both of them, or is it just... No, the this is a different one. It's a different one in the Tomb Raider. Oh, yeah. I didn't even bother looking. Yeah, the Battle of Matoria, so it is the uh, a couple of different Bretonian armies. One exiles, one's an Eritrean crusade against yeah. a grand Tomb King army. Just a generic whatever invasion force. So, yeah. like, for, for context for 3, you 3,000 points, by the way. That's a big game. Yeah, for context for you guys, it took Luke and I two days to film, a day and a half to film that game. We, and we walked out from one studio to this one to record our first impressions on Mountain Ventures here. Yeah, so, like, if... Not, not to say that 3,000 points will always take two days, but, like, if we were well-versed in the... In the game, that still would have taken us all day to record that. I think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it a very grindy in a good way. It's, it's a grindy. I know you love grind, but I don't. I do. <laughs> but I, I like this. I like this iteration of grind. It's quite good. I have no reason to tell you I love this edition already, other than to tell you I like I love this edition. We're going to cover it no matter what, but I actually really do love this edition. Granted, I have one game under my belt. One full I'm loving game, yeah. everything that we've seen. Now, I've already record, it recorded a um, <laughs> video pump. that's an hour long. Uh, all about the spell lores in this book. But this video is basically our first impressions of the old world. Right. We'll talk about the uh, rule book a little bit. Things that we found that are kind of a question, but not really. Um, things that are different from previous editions. But I just want to cover like our basic first impressions first. And I had some apprehensions on some a few things that by the time we were finished playing, I loved. For example, we were doing a little off-camera practice game with uh, Lizardmen and Dwarves. Yeah. And the slant I was Great worried... Great game, by the way. Yeah, I wish we recorded that, actually. The slant I was worried was not worth his three, four hundred points, whatever he was. Is he four hundred points? I think he's something like that. Um, 260, 300 points. I can't remember. Like 260 the, base? I think, I think... Oh, man, I can look it up. But it was something like 300 and something. Maybe close to four. I could be wrong. You can check uh, <laughs> probably today. Yeah, I'm assuming today the um, PDFs will be available for everybody to download. Yeah. Um, I can maybe. look it up in two seconds. Either way, I thought he was going to be too expensive and not worth it. Not the same slant he was. He used to win me games. I'm like, oh, he can barely do anything. But then by the end of that game, I'm like, oh, okay, magic isn't the same, but it's still yeah. a vi invaluable tool. That's going to so, be, be one of the major things that's going to come up in this edition as you play it. If you're new to Fantasy from 8th Edition, magic is going to feel horrible. Magic is going to feel I, like super, super weak, but it's always supposed to have been a tool to get you to the finish line as opposed to... So instead of magic right being it, a know. separate part, like it's, a, it's, it's a game within a game yeah. or a secondary effect in the game that just stops the game. Yeah. Let's do magic now and like new units and stuff. Yeah. Now it's just part of the game. Yeah. I'm loving the way the magic works. So I liked magic in 6th and 7th edition. Yeah. Magic in 8th, 8th edition was kind of trash. Well, yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was very flashy. Yeah. yeah, it was very, yeah. and that, that, that's not a bad, like, that is going to be one thing. People are going to be like, ah, I like how flashy 8th edition's magic was. It won't be that flashy anymore. Okay, yeah. but, uh, with those spoilers, there were some really key spells that did big. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. No so, matter what, there's still, like, fireballs that'll cause panics. There's all that's still in the game. We yeah. played a lot of the Warhammer Armors Project fan-made edition on this channel as well. Oh, yeah, um, a lot of that. That magic system was rewritten, and I really enjoyed that one. I thought it was the best one. That might be my, one um, my, my minus the cards from 5th and 4th edition. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, for me, the three best would be the War Warhammer Armors Project, 5th edition, and now this. And yeah. I can honestly say I don't know which one I like the most. Probably 5th edition. No, 5th edition is my favorite because the cards. I might go Army Project second, yeah. And then this is second for me. This one's second? Well, this one's second because it's like it's, this one's good because of what Steve said earlier where it doesn't put a hard stop on the game. Yeah. So say you're playing Dwarves and you just you, you just hate, or, or corn or whatever, you just hate the magic phase as a player. I know a lot of people that just didn't like it, like I hate this stupid phase. I wish we could avoid it or whatever. Now you don't have to worry about it. It's like you do the shooting in the shooting phase, the movement in the movement phase, whatever, right? I feel like the yeah. anvil will, if you want to play the magic as a dwarf, the anvil will do this, the, the job for you. Yeah. Um, now, we've said that in the past, 
But the anvil is like, oh, it doesn't really do... It does a little bit of magic, but not really. Yeah. It, the anvil's just as much as everything else. It's good. Yeah, anvil's great. Anvil's awesome. If you want to play dwarves and have a little bit of that kind of like dwarven magic, the anvil's a great option. Yeah. yeah. So I'm digging the magic phase. That was, that's my big yeah. takeaway. Not even a phase. Just oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> My biggest takeaway is yeah. I wasn't expecting like magic, but I really do like magic yeah. in this edition. I think generally, if you are indifferent about magic from any other edition of fantasy, you liked it, you didn't like it, you won't you won't feel any. Oh, you know what? Yeah. To be absolutely fair, Luca is unaware of this. Um, yeah. The reason why I'm loving magic so much, even more so, is because last night right. I recorded the review of the magic. Oh, you did magic. All the lores so I went through yeah. all the lores with context of understanding the game more. Yeah, I'm like, oh wow, I actually like. Every one of these lores. That's awesome. The most, the goofiest lore would have been the Wall lore, but I'm still. Oh, I didn't be, even look at that one. I think it's going to be goofy and fun, and it'll be great. But every lore has like uh, four, of the, sorry, five of the six spells. Like, oh, I want that almost all the time. Mm-hmm. And there's ones like, oh, it's situational. Still want it. So yeah. every lore, there wasn't a bad lore. I cannot at this moment rank the lores. Okay, but fair. Ah, uh, you might get there at some point. Yeah. I, I, I've only played necromancy so far because I played Dwarves one game and. Uh, Tomb Kings is another game, so I'm, of course I'm going to play Necromancy. Necromancy seemed great. Every spell in there was, yep. felt really good. I, yeah, everything felt pretty nice. Everything had its purpose. What's, you know? uh, um, so your one game in, what is the one thing that you are taking away that you like the most about this current edition? Is there anything sticking stick out for you? I'm trying to think of something that's unique to the uh, old world here. Because they have taken a lot of inspiration from all the different fantasy editions and yes. iterations of the game. And yep. even a lot of stuff from Armage Project itself. Yeah. I'm not going to say if they took way. it from that or if that was an idea they already had. Maybe. Because well, a lot of it would be a common progression of the game as well. Yeah. Like That makes sense that that's how it would be resolved now. I mean, uh, that, g- yeah. games, uh, who's to say Games Workshop didn't copy Fly X? Yeah. Or Matthias didn't copy... Um, Armor Bane X from 40k, and the, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. maybe they both do the same idea. Who knows? Who cares? What's my one single favorite thing? Problem? Well, oh, that's that that is unique to the old world. Yeah. What what, what is to, or, or, or the form, How the how the formations work? I yeah. guess. How you open order, closed order, skirmish, lance is a unique one. Oh, I need to change mine. I actually really like combat now. Just the phase combat. I Just think the way combat works. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can get into that, but... Yeah, I would, yeah. Well, I mean, I like the... My all-time favorite thing is the no-step up. But that was like... For me, that was like that existed in the other edition. So it's not really a new thing. They just brought it back. So in this edition, uh, yeah. casualties come from the front. So if you die before your initiative step is that you're going to fight, yeah. uh, you're not attacking, which... I know this initiative is Initiative is a stat again. So this is... A lot of people are going to might grumble at this, but I, I swear it's a good thing. <laughs> it's like it's... Initiative matters again. Uh, all of the bonuses on like getting pushed back, charging, the weapons you choose matter again. Because so, of no step up, a lot more elements of the game will be a lot more relevant again. 5th edition was Hero Hammer. 8th edition was Magic Hammer. 7th edition was Cav Hammer. I feel like by default, 6th was as well, but people didn't know it yet. Like, yeah, I know. 6th didn't last super long. Exactly. So 7th eventually came up we with, said, oh yeah, Cav's really we good. We said 6th yeah. was Infantry Hammer because we came off of 5th, but it didn't actually end up being that way. Yeah. But I think Cav is just as strong as 6th, but maybe people didn't run it as much for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. I think this one is finally War Hammer. War Hammer. Well, everything, like, monsters are really... Because the no step on monsters are really good. Well, okay, and stuff like that. Well, sorry, you, remind, you reminded me of something. Of so one thing I had, a, I remember, I was saying, oh, this is gonna be the monster edition. Yeah, and then I re- then you show me how to move them properly. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay. There's some monsters seem very very powerful in this edition. They are very but powerful. Then yeah. they are, but then they don't move as freely as we have had them move in the past. This is probably the most restrictive monsters I've ever moved, but they're strong. So overall. they they basically yeah. have to wheel. Um, and move like a like a unit for the most yep. part, yep. but they also get to like pivot afterwards. Yep, they get a they get a they have a rule called lumbering, which is like after they're done their move, as long as they didn't march or charge, I guess, or fleeing. But like the, those ones don't oh, matter. Wait, they, they can't they can't pivot if they march. No, almost certain. I'll double check. I'll double yeah. check. But yeah, because That's, yeah, you continue. Yeah, because I was gonna say like there's a point where I'm like, oh, this this needs to be dominated by monsters before you get nervous about this movement restriction. After playing the game, even just one time, we had a lot of monsters. Uh, like, oh, this is good. This is a positive thing for the game. Unless the charge march or fled. Yep. You have to do regular moves, too. Okay. Yeah. But you could, with a march, you could probably... Oh. I was playing Undead anyways. I can't march, so... <laughs> true. Oh, so, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's probably why I didn't notice so much. Also, you can't cast spells after marching, because my slan in the uh, practice game has a fly eight. I try to fly sixteen and cast spells. And cast spells. No, you can't. Do you that. can. You can. Ma- you just can't do like magic missiles and vortexes. 
Or maybe it's just magic missiles. It might even be Vortex. Maybe, maybe, but those are what we're yeah. trying to do, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, what are the big changes from for the for the veterans now? What are the big changes? Okay. Look at wrote them all down. So I got them on my phone. Uh, excuse me while I look down if you want to entertain them. But for yeah. the most part, it's like... Uh, one of the biggest changes is probably the uh, the leeway for moving through units and stuff. Right. That's like the thing I have on the... I, I kind of wrote it down. That's on my phone. I got like a list top down as, like, as I was reading through the rules. Like this is different, mate. This is... And I'm not going to compare them to 7th, 6th, 5th, or 4th edition, because those are so far back. Mm -hmm. And any veterans might be from 8th edition mostly, or just new state edition. And a lot of the things they've added, it's going to be funny. Because a lot of people are like, oh, it's a really cool idea. I'm glad they have that in the game. I came from 8th edition. 8th edition could really use this. Probably just from 5th, 6th, or 7th edition anyways. A lot of this, a lot of this is the good things of 8th edition and the good things of those old editions. With, honestly, just a couple of ideas that are unique to this edition. This is not, overall, a new idea. It makes it hard to say. This is a true it sounds ninth harsh. edition. Yeah, this is a proper ninth edition with like, and they made they released the article. They had said something along the lines of like, we're going to take inspiration from all the older editions this of the game. This is very familiar if you played the older oh, editions, yeah. oh, but yeah. everything is updated. The, it feels yeah like if you play forty k, you ninth we were in tenth edition. It's very you read the rules is actually very similar to ninth edition forty k yep. in comparison even eighth but it, a little bit yeah yeah but it plays differently because of the minute, the, the tiny yeah. differences that change a lot of things with domino effects the, right the foundation of Warhammer Fantasy Battles is still in this rule book like it's, yeah, oh yeah. You, you could you could just play a game and you you'll probably forget things here and there the subtle changes but you'd be fine like you're not gonna like I'm pretty sure it works this way you're probably right I'm pretty sure it works this way it's probably right like a small example would be like panicking was always twenty five percent now it's more, more than, than 25%. 25%. So that came up in our game, yeah. too. And now that's, that's a small kind of like an annoying change, but ultimately, when you're just playing with you and your buddies, it doesn't. that's never going to make a big difference. If you forget, you forget it, whatever. That's yeah. the game. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, there's leeway and movement now. That's a nice thing. So when you are doing a maneuver, you can your corners can go over your other units as long as they don't land on them. You're not allowed to like move straight through yeah. your units, but if you're, say, you're doing a wheel and your corners clip and you can finish that wheel... You're good to go. It's yep. during maneuvers, which the biggest thing is the charge. So if you ever find yourself kind of like, like your army's a little unwieldy all over the place, you got like a unit here and a unit here. You want to charge this unit into an enemy that's over here. Well, normally in the older editions, like I can't, it's a failed charge. Now you can wheel through that unit and complete the charge. Yeah. But you can't like move straight through. You can't like wheel halfway through and then move through. You have to like complete the wheel. Yeah. As, yeah. It, as it's written. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just, it just. No longer tripping up well, you're by your own units. No, like yeah. the malls as a whole are basically twenty percent bigger across the board. So that's an important rule to have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you can you can get within one inch of terrain now. You can and within and, one and inch of your own models. You can just have your whole army butted up against each other. Kind of probably a necessity because the game is so much bigger. Well, twenty percent bigger. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh in a lot of ways. Uh yeah. So there's that leeway. We have uh, I'm trying to think of unique things. Everything that's new from eighth to now, right? Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, templates and everything. You, you don't. You don't just count. The math is very different on who's hit. Yeah. You only really have a couple models guaranteed hit. It's any model completely under the template is hit for flamer templates, big five inch and three uh, three inch blast templates, and then anything that's partially under, even like one percent partially under it, will be hit on a four up. That's to represent the models like kind of getting a little heads up. You can kind of see the giant rock flying towards you. So 50-50, they step out of the way, just what, like in uh, Return of the King. When a 3-inch template used to hit a unit in 8th edition, you'd get like 16 to 20 hits. Right, now it's... Um, you're getting, depending on your unit size, 25 you're getting 1 to 2 hits. Now, yeah. Plus, you're getting about 11 to 12 hits. No. No, 1 to 2 guaranteed hits. And then... Ha, like 50, 50, 9 50. to 10, 50-50 hits. Yeah, so... so you, significantly less hits from templates. So that means stone throwers are a lot wor uh, worse. Breath weapons are a lot worse. And... Uh, and those weapons are now D3 plus 1 damage instead of D6. On the single hit, yeah. So like all, so all around War Machines cranked way down. Way down. But that's a good thing because they were way too overtuned in the last edition. That's nope. my opinion. Yeah. A little yeah. biased there, yeah. of course. I but. still think we're going to see plenty of War Machines on the table. Oh, I, they're still useful. Yeah. yeah. They're still going to chip wounds off. Mo they're the best way to deal with monsters. Good, I think they're in a good spot right now. Yeah. Yeah, but instead of a you're cannon... Not one just, shotting a, you're not yeah. one-shotting any monster. You'll never one-shot a monster with a yeah. cannon anymore. You'll need at least two really good shots. Yeah. You'll get three on average. You'll get a, which is, yeah. I think, a very, yeah. very good thing. Because realistically, that might be annoying for you as the person with the war machine. But you got to remember, your opponent wants to play the game too. Yep. So if you kill a monster in a couple shots, well, you had two really good shots. And so overall, like uh, templates and war machines cranked way down because cannons are down to depends on the cannon, but like D three plus one damage, D three or, D3, D3, or yeah. just D three in general. 
the AP is down as well. Like yep. even regular cannons don't even go through armor that well. Like, uh, even, most monsters only have heavy cannons armor. Cannons like AP two with armor bane, right? Yeah, so the six to wound is AP four. Yeah. It's like armor bane two. Yeah. Um, I'm trying so to go. So armor bane is a rule there. So on a six to wound, you add the bracketed to the arm, uh, armor penetration of the attack. So armor bane two on a six to wound is additional two AP. Uh, the next biggest thing would be how you organize your units in this edition. You have, uh, I'll call them formations, because I think that's what they're called, yep. but I can't remember for, off the top of my head. I love this. Yeah, this, this is my single favorite, newest thing the Old World's added to it. Kind of. It's like a skirmishers always existed before and all that. Yep. But now they have clear definitions of what your units are. You're, the most generic one is closed order. You are shoulder to shoulder with your buddy uh, going to war. You are going to be, this is kind of similar to Army's Project. Simplest term for this one, yeah. that's what the units always were in the past. Correct. It is, it's now just called Closed Order. It's called Closed Order. It always gives you plus one to combat resolution bonus. So long as you have two models. As long as you have two models. Because <laughs> there's a lot of monsters that are arranged in Closed Order as a special rule. But that's just a... Because uh, everybody has uh, a for, an order, like, like a closed order, open yes. order, or skirmish. That's one special rule every unit in the game will have just to define how it moves. So like almost every yeah. monster is closed order, but it doesn't matter because you don't get the combat bonus. They're single model. Single yeah. model. Yeah. It just but defines how it moves. When, you're sergeant, yeah. when your unit's down to just a sergeant, no more plus one combat res. <laughs> yes, essentially. Uh, and that stacks as well, which is the big yes. thing. That's the strongest thing in closed order is Say you say your one unit is fighting two units. You're, they're all closed order. All three of them are closed order. The two get plus two to combat res because of stacks. In, in, infinitely all stable. Yeah. Like you only have so many guys. So in combat. combat res, you add one banner for the combat. Yep. Three ranks for combat. Uh, two, or, us sorry, two usually. Two usually. Yeah. Three if um, under some circumstances. Four, yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, closed order up to as many units that are in combat. Yep. Oh, and then your flanks and your yep. and stuff. But Closed Order suffers all of the restrictions of regular movement that every fantasy player is used to. So, wheeling, maneuvering, there's, yep. no, there's no leeway there. The other very similar one, to clo it, looks, it looks physically the same, it's yep. called Open Order. So, it just represents like you're more of a warrior, like a warrior of chaos can do Open Order, right? Yep. But can they do Open Order? Because they're probably the I best at representing I it. I think they're only Open Order. Off the top okay. of my head, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure they're only Open Order. It, it just represents they're, they're a little bit more free on the battlefield. They're still close enough to count rank bonuses and everything, but you won't get a combat bonus, the passive combat bonus. Right. But what you do get instead is after you move, which I believe is the same thing, you can't march or wheel or anything that, like that, you get to do a 90 degree pivot on your unit. So I think you can march as well. You, you might be able to, but I, I only say that because the monster won the lumbering rule made me think maybe you don't. But while Steve looks that up, it's just like you can move your unit forward and instead of having to wheel ponderously and cost the movement, you can do your full move straight and then just do a 90 degree pivot to represent like how loose of a formation that unit's supposed to be. And, and you'll still get your rank bonuses and unless you're disrupted. open order also comes with move to cover. Correct. I forgot about that part. You're, you're not so restricted. And you can go through woods at no penalty, and fences, I suppose, at no penalty. I can't quite remember what move can, to cover. Can I pause general. all this positivity for a second? Right. I want to do the one big negative of this book. Ah, uh, well, like every book, it's a little, it's, it's like hard you, to Do you want to do it? Do you want to say it? Oh, the index sucks. The, 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 the index is terrible. It's got to be. The index is. I'm sorry, guys, but like, what is up with the index? The, like, uh, this is three pages of, of like, maybe. go to, looking for a word, go to page whatever. No matter what you're looking for, it's not in here. Ah, like it's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. There's three pages of keywords you're not looking for. I'm gonna ramble a little bit here. Like, there's obviously things that are like good to find here, but I feel like every time I wanted to find something, I couldn't find it. Like, <laughs> okay, so open order was in the back of the book. It tells me to go to page 175. I go there. It says open order is a special rule for the finding the, ru the rules. I go to page 182. Yeah. So you know what? Open order. There is a lot of useful things in here. Now every time we went to every, but every time, time we every wanted time to, look, we went for to go look for something, it's not in the index. Like ward saves weren't in here, right? Right. You had to go find out where ward saves were. Like that was one example. What was the other one? I couldn't remember. Some of them were funny. Like, but anyways, the index. Oh, an open order can only ever claim a rank bonus of one. Oh, I didn't know that. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. So, uh, closed order can claim a rank bonus of two. Oh, okay. Open order can claim a rank bonus of one. No longer can you claim a rank bonus of three plus. Or, sorry, three. But there are stipulations. If you have the horde special rule. The horde special rule allows you to get that. A uh, horde is not what it was before. All it means, if you have the horde special rule, is you can get plus one more combat res from if, ranks yeah, if you have the than rank. you normally yeah. would allow. So, if you have open order and horde, you get up to plus two combat res for ranks. Yeah, and, but they were smart with it, and they only put horde on units that would realistically have a horde. Now, think 8th edition, and all these, like, chaos warriors and hordes, and grave garden hordes, and white lions and hordes. Those models should have never been able to benefit from the horde rule. 
things like goblins and zombies and skeletons or whatever should have been able to benefit you from You were that. right. You could only quick turn, which is a pivot up to 90 degrees if you didn't march. That's tip. That's or a, charge That's flight. a typical thing yeah. I found. Like, if you're if you're given a little bit more allowance with moving, you it does restrict you on like a normal move. Not oh a march wait, not like move that. through cover. They have dispersed ranks. Units in open order do not become disrupted by oh, so you can, difficult or dangerous. Training. That's it. So they so can, they can fight, fight in the woods. woods. They can fight on a fence and still get their rank bonuses. And, and fight in the woods and still get the rank bonuses. It just represents they they they're all like essentially like I'd say closed order closed order. Oh, like, they can fight in the fence too. You're right. Yeah. Closed order is like soldiers. Open order is like warriors. If that, they're all individually skilled, yeah. but they can fight well together Square. and everything. Your tomb guard, they weren't open order by chance, were they? No, closed order. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, granted, this is because they're more like soldiers, right? They're more trained to fight like that. True. Whereas, like, it's hard to, like, it's, it's, it's an argument I have in, like, like, more of a description. Like, a warrior of chaos is a warrior. He doesn't need to fight. He's not trained to fight with his buddy beside him. They're just really good fighters. Yeah. So they decided to work together to go crush the enemy more. But uh, yeah, that aside, the um, that's open order, that's closed order. The other one would be skirmishing, which is very close to the older editions of skirmishing. Same you see There's, the rules are very easy to work with. They, they they don't have to form up in ranks or files. They can just move all over the place as long as they're coherent, which is like what two inches, one inch, two inches. Two, looks like. it, it's, it's one. Yeah. And they have if you connect with one model, they all do a move to get into base contact with you. It's super easy, super simple. Skirmishers are great; they're powerful. Uh, but they they're not going to be as useful as they were in eighth edition, probably. Pretty, pretty close to it, though. They can't redirect because, like, the skirmishers line up to you and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. What little changes we got? Uh, and then there's, like, other unique ones like Lance Formation and stuff like that. Lance Formation is just oh, unique to Bretonians. Yeah. But it's just clear, defined special rules on how your orders well, actually, are... Actually, while you're looking at one up, I'm going to talk about one. So I'm assuming most of you by now... Marching read... Column is another one, sorry. Yeah, Marching Column, I'm not sure what to say about that right now. Great if you have drilled as a special rule. True. If you need to use Marching Column. But there's, like, there's, like... Four generic uh, uh, formations, and then there's the lance. I'm going to say, I don't know, I think we can gloss over that. I think it's such an advanced rule that is going to be so rarely used. You know what? Don't even bother with marching column right now. You need to learn the game before you understand that one. Correct. That one is... It's just not going to be used that often. It will get used. But it's like if you're early enough in the game, out of position with a unit, and you're drilled, you can assume a march column. And drill allows you to take, take, redress your ranks redress your before ranks, you Add move. more, take yeah. some away. Yeah. So it's good for more. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, maybe, so maybe, you might not even be able to march or drill. I, I didn't even think about talk that. Talk about how panic has changed. But before we talk about panic yeah. has changed, I need to talk about how combat has changed, which is being covered in um, the Warcom article about how close combat combat resolution is done. So when you lose combat and you fail your leadership test, but it was the failed leadership test isn't higher than your unmodified leadership, you're gonna fall back in good order. This is. This is like a complicated way to, not not the way you're describing, but this whole new to old world is a great change, but a little complicated at first. You know what? Actually, yeah. today at lunch, we kind of nailed it. E essentially, every army in the game is now stubborn. You know, old stubborn, but you're, you, you don't just old hold. Stubborn. Yeah, you're right, old stubborn. You, you don't hold. You still have to give ground. You're, you're giving up something. So, uh, so let's say like, you're a leadership eight elf. Boom, right? Easy enough. You're fighting Chaos Warriors, you lose combat by five, but you roll a seven, so right? I, so yesterday there was a video on Mini Wargaming. Today there's a video on this channel about a report. Uh, we pro we will very, well, it's better to watch those videos to understand yeah. how combat falls back. I think we can just show you better visually with that. Yeah. Also, every Thursday night we're going to be streaming. Yep. We're going to show you plenty of this. But it, the reason why I wanted to bring this whole part up yep. is it actually relates to panic. Yep. So now when you oh, panic, yes. um, if you are above 50% unit strength, which unit strength is back, by the way, I love that. Yeah. Um, if you're both, if you're above half of your starting unit strength. I think for that phase. Yes. Say, like, it no, 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 when you take the test. Right. Well, I, I think of, like, I mean, like, say you, you, if you start with 10, and then you got shot down to 5, and then now it's a later in the game, and you got shot from 5 yeah, down yeah. to 3. So when you yeah. take the test. When you take the when test. When you take yeah. your panic test, if you have more than half of your starting models, you don't flee when you fail panic. You right. just... Fall back in good order. Yep. You go back 2d6, the highest die. Automatically and rally. And automatically rally. It just shoots the unit out of position. It just pushes them back. Yep. Now, if you're below 50% um, unit strength, yep. then you would flee. You would just do a so, break, panic, panic and break. Things don't no, run off the no table, panic. even though they have, and I think both yep. the games we played, or the practice game in this one, things don't run off the table anymore, but they do. Essentially, gone are the lose combat by one. I rolled a seven on my Leadership 7 guy, and now my whole unit breaks. Yeah, that's just gone. Thing. That's gone. You're grinding your combat. We got Warhammer. Yeah. You, have to, you have to physically roll higher than your break 
under normal combat circumstances, sorry, higher uh, than your leadership to actually break from combat. Now there is, why, a, there, is a, well, there, there is an exception if the enemy drastically outnumbers you after the combat's resolved. Yes. You automatically break at that yes. point, which is definitely something Has they should have. Should have added. Yeah, it was very close that one time, yeah. but yeah. I had like unit strength five against unit strength three. I'm like, if I killed one more model, you would have broke. I, at this point, I still don't know what the average unit size we're going to see is moving forward. I don't no know idea. if it's MSU or yeah. big unit yet. I think uh, your heavy infantry is going to run around like bricks of 10 and 15. Yeah, or... heavy infantry only need to be four wide for a rank bonus as well. And they can only claim up to one rank bonus anyways? Yeah. Uh, no. Is it That two? goes by their order. Oh, true. Yeah, so he true. heavy... Infantry in open order can claim one rank. Yeah. Heavy infantry in closed order can, can claim two. two ranks. I wonder how much heavy infantry comes in closed order, though. I haven't seen uh, any. There is. Uh, so yeah. my orcs, I was looking at them, a lot of them are heavy infantry. Okay. Uh, most of them are closed. Uh, I think I think black orcs are open, but most of them are closed. Okay. I wonder if it's like base size based on if they're heavier. I, I, so I'm starting to suspect exactly that. I haven't figured that out yet. Well, they're bigger infantry, so yeah, yeah fair. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, we were talking about the, the panic. Differences. Thing. Yeah, we talked about panic. Uh, any other differences? Uh, to panic like major yeah. differences that are put the game makes the gameplay differently. Well, absolutely, I got a long list here, but I'm trying. I'm skipping. I got like a little minor things here too, but they're not yeah, the as minor important ones. We can yeah. talk about those in the live streams. These are basic. Uh, um, being being disrupted is finally back again. You don't need like eighth edition was the uh, you need two ranks of five models to disrupt. That literally never came. Now up. you need unit strength five, five to disrupt. But if you're heavy infantry, it's unit strength ten. Yes. Heavy infantry needs yep. more to get disrupted. Correct. Which is a great little rule there. So wait, hold on. I'm going to explain that for those who don't know. So when you're in combat. <laughs> And somebody is in your flank that has a unit strength of at least five. It disrupts you. So you're fighting somebody on the side. Your 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 fighting formation is a little you know disrupted. You don't get any rank bonuses. This might this might sound like a weird made up rule. This existed in eighth edition. It just literally never came up. It, I, I I joke. It came up a little bit, but like way less than it probably should have. You'd have like ten two ranks of five. So that's like a. 300 point cavalry unit. And if one of those models die, they can't break anything anymore. Monsters could never disrupt because there's one rank, right? Chariots would never do it. So it was like just other bricks of infantry, I suppose. I can't. I just, I just, uh, I remember when I started playing the game, you needed only three cavalry models to be alive at the time of rolling the dice. Yeah. You needed your strength five and three was enough. Yep. But once it went to two ranks of 10, you needed 10 cav models in eighth edition. It was ridiculous. It was, uh, it was a little over the top, yeah. But uh, that being gone, it's back to old 7th edition, 6th edition, 5th edition, break checks and all that stuff. Uh, the next one that would be pretty big from 8th edition is the line of sight in this edition. Oh, right. A line of sight is... It's the way he likes it. Is the way I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's still true line of sight. Uh, you draw, you, you look at your model, you look at their model, boop. And it's like, do I see you? I do see you. However, you do have to draw a line from your model to that model. And that line crosses anything, be it... Terrain, walls, other other models and everything. Except skirmishers. Yeah, you could, well, because they're all dispersed, right? So you draw, I, I think... Th you I, can physically see through a skirmish model. You can actually see through yes. the model? Okay, yeah. So skirmishers don't block line of sight, but that makes sense because they're all dispersed yeah. all over the place, yeah. Uh, you can't see them. So, great example. And if you played old fantasy, you'd be like, oh, this is exactly old fantasy's line of sight. This is how line of sight in fantasy was forever. And then 8th edition said, we'll just get rid of that. And that brought us some problems. <laughs> uh, so they got they got rid of eighth editions. I say they brought back seventh. Um, brick of twenty five guys. Brick of twenty five guys. And there's a an art unit of uh, archers behind the twenty five here. That archer unit can't see this one, even though they clearly could. Can't see him unless you're on a hill, right? Or or large target and stuff like that. Yeah. Which also means you're only shooting in one rank. Not because you shoot in one rank. It's because the second rank can't see through the front rank. Correct. Unless yep. you're on a hill. Unless you're on a hill, because then or for a large target. Or fighting a large target because large targets have great rules. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. So it said line of sight is way more restrictive, which means the spells are harder to get off. It's harder to shoot missile weapons. War machines are a lot harder to see. Cannons, you need to see the point you're aiming at. Yeah. So if you have a brick of infantry, there's a monster behind the brick of infantry, and you want to aim at that monster, you can't see the point behind that infantry to safely shoot at it. So you'd have to shoot in front of the infantry, and hopefully it bounces far enough through. Or get another shot somewhere else. That kind of stuff. Another cool thing about war machines is I forgot about, I think. Cannibals don't bounce through monstrous right. stuff. I think they, they all catch up. Now, they yeah. stop them. Yeah, so you can't like ping through three of them. You can't kill them anymore. Yeah, you don't really <laughs> kill them anymore. Yeah, uh, unit strength's back. We t uh, talked about that. Uh, how you ca how you generate spells is a big deal. It's all fully random. It's like a minor note, but it's a nice thing. There is an art. There is a magic for anyone who's like, oh, I hate that. I want to pick my spells. There is a magic item you can buy that lets you do that. Yes, but for the most part, all spells are random, which yeah. is nice. There's no like well, roll doubles. You pick one. You just Fully keep randomizing. You can roll spell. your spells, but the great thing is Games Workshop now you have sells the cards. cards. Yeah, they have the cards for 8th too. They sent it yeah. to us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you can just deal out your cards. Yep, that's but it. 
if you roll doubles, if you're going to roll your spells, like roll your dice and you take the spells corresponding to the dice rolls you roll, yep. no more picking your spells if you roll doubles like previous editions. If you roll doubles on your dice, you get a re-roll until you have unique numbers. So it's pretty good. And the, uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the magic item, but it's important to exist because I know a lot of people don't like fully random things. I'm a, that's why I'm super biased. I love fully random. Any, I want the game to take away. Oh, as, I'm about the lore familiar. Yeah, the lore, it's a, our, I think it's an arcane item. It's an arcane item. It, it, it means Hiles it takes up had, an arcane item. Slot, Hiles nice. had this forever. Yeah. 30 points. I don't even think it's rare. 30 points and you pick your spells. But you have to give up your arcane item slot. Yes. Yeah. Ish. Oh, no, it is rare. It, it, it's, it, it's a really one per army. One, one per army, yeah. So there's that. I'm not a big. Fan. I, I I would like the game to take all options away from the player and just let the dice dictate everything. But I, I, in my yeah. other video, going through the spells, if you have to roll your spells, it's not going to feel that bad. And no, because all the spells are great. That's so, the nice thing. Yeah. Actually, to the point that maybe we're wrong. Maybe people won't be auto taking this because all the spells points. are good. Yeah. All the spells are pretty decent. Well, you brought up a good point. You wanted to make a character that was going to run around on their own. True. You, you don't want a spell that's buff my unit. True. So that that would make sense. But. But the great thing is, the way spells work in this edition, you can swap one of your spells for the signature spell of your True. lore, yeah. or your personal lore. Um, so lore, every, every army has their own lore, yep. or the lady. You, can, you're, you know there's a spell you're going to pick. Yep. There's so, like three per Yeah, there's usually going to be there's gonna be four spells you're going to be able to pick from. Yep. The signature from the lore you're rolling in, oh, that's and true. then the three from your lore. Yep. Now, you only have one of those. But you know you're never going to have a useless wizard because you know you have one of those. Yeah, you always get to pick one of those. They're all signature spells, so they're all kind of tame but useful. Utility I spells. think, no, I think yeah. some of my favorite spells so far have been signature, to be honest. Well, they're just really, they're not going to win the game on their own, but they're good. They're consistent, right? That one fireball. The one fireball? The one that you kept. The like, first fireball that you connected with. I had a ruby ring ruin. It's, <laughs> it's, it's still fireball. It's signature. Yeah, it's still signature. Yeah. It's just fireball. Oh, no, Is that signature? I don't know. It's just fireball, though, right? It's, it's not like uh, it's like it, it panicked peasant archers off the table. It was good. At an at appropriate time. Um, yeah, so uh, spell casting must be in your front arc now, no matter what. And fun fact uh, wizards cannot cast spells in armor unless it's chaos armor. True. No more glittering scales, butcher. <laughs> all, <laughs> casting spells. All your spells must be cast in the front arc. So no buffing units behind you. Yes, you don't need no line hexing of, units behind you. You don't need line of sight. That's a big thing because it was huge. Every edition, as far as I can remember, hexes and enhancements or spells that weren't classified as that, but did that kind of thing, never required line of sight. Your positioning or matters. Art, yes, and and even more important, if your wizard's in one of your units and that unit's in combat, that wizard's not casting any buffs or hexes. Yep, you may only cast the sailments when you're in combat or self spells. You can cast spells on yourself if they're target self. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure? Yo, 100%, yeah. Because I remember some of the... I'm like, oh, that's not bad. Because a lot of the enhancement spells are target self. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, good. So you can you can only cast the assailment spells and target self spells. Okay. Not all of them are... Not all enhancements are target self, but some of them so are. Some of them are. Yeah. I was going through them well, again last night. So the assailment spells are spells that wizards cast that only they can cast when they're in combat. It's a melee spell. Yeah. Just, it's a melee spell. Yeah. They literally they'll like conjure a little pillar of flame in front of them and like, yeah, all the guys in front of me are on fire. They can do things like that, but they can't buff things across the table. Obviously, can't magic missile or cast vortexes and stuff like that. They're too focused on like the enemy right in front of them, so they're casting spells at them. Uh, the other one would be, yeah, the hexes and enhancements have to target in front of you. Uh, they don't need line of sight. Can't target behind you anymore. I'd love that. And then there was, no, uh, the way the spelling works is fine and all that stuff. Oh, Magical uh, vortexes feel a lot weaker than they used to, but they're way too overtuned in eighth edition, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I talked about this in the magic video, but I'm just going to talk about it again here. Like Lucas said, magic vortexes were game breakingly overpowered previously. Yep. Now, for the most part, no, no, none of them move right away. So when you cast a magical vortex, you gotta place it. The template may not touch any enemy models. Can't yes. do it. And they have really short range. A long range vortex was fifteen inches. Oh. Typically, they're twelve or nine. And the other, the other thing about the enhancements and the hexes being in your front arc, uh, but no line of sight, is you have to cast these before your movement phase. So you have to set yourself up yeah. on the previous turn, or hope your enemy moved into your arc. Which the arc is pretty wide, mind you. To sure. be fair, a lot of what yeah. we're saying is already in the Warcom article. So oh, maybe, maybe true, everyone's yeah. lost over this. But uh, yeah. uh, the vortexes, you cast them, and then they move at the start of the next turn. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they scatter into your opponent or the target you want to hit. Yeah. And then your opponent has a chance to dispel it right there. So they are heavily toned down, but I still think they're useful. And you have to watch out for some spells do a blast, but they're a magic missile and not a vortex. True. So you got to watch out for those. True. Vortexes typically represent like they just sold the card. It'll stay on the card. It's a magical vortex. You just gotta watch for that. You gotta watch for some of that kind of stuff. You know what? I'll tell you this right now. If it has uh, over fifteen inch range, it's a magic missile. Yeah, probably. <laughs> vortexes are 
very, uh, very ponderous, but they're, they're still effective. Um, and again, these are all things, if you played 8th edition, you still understand the game, but this is how it's changed. The uh, six don't always wound anymore in this edition. Oh, that's right. It hasn't come up yet. Uh, it, I don't think it actually really will that much, because I realize a lot of my constructs are like, like the Tomb King constructs are just down to top of the six anyways. I believe... No, no, here's why. There are a couple of spells that can lower your strength. That'll be a big deal. Yeah. That'll make it so you things get, some things can't be wounded. What was it? Is it? I can't remember the exact one, but it's like if your strength is four lower than their toughness. I wouldn't even know which seven? section to find the chart. Is the shooting phase has the chart? Well, That's the, true. The, so does the combat phase. It's like if it's six higher, I believe. So strength one cannot wound toughness seven. That's two to eight is seven higher, three to nine. Oh, it's like multi. I see. It's like it's a weird chart, but it's like if it's six higher than your strength, you cannot wound it. Well, that's not true because two can hurt seven and three can hurt yeah. seven. Uh, seven is six higher than two. Yeah, but like, uh, oh, six, one wait. to six. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Steve can't do it. He's... One, to, one to seven that is six recorded. difference. <laughs> two to eight is seven difference. Three to nine is eight difference. Uh, well, it's, no, three to nine is six difference. They're all the seventh, the seventh interval, the seventh bracket is where you can't hurt them. One can't hurt toughness seven. Yeah. Two can't hurt toughness eight. That's three seven can't higher, hurt toughness nine. But that's eight higher. And so. four can't hurt toughness ten. No, three, three to nine is seven higher. Yeah, it's all seven higher. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but that's it. And that'll never come It'll up, I think. it only come up with spells. I think it's only strength so reduction. So when you buff and... toughness, there's one spell that buffs toughness, and then a couple spells that lower strength. If you combo those spells off, you're going to make things unwoundable in this game. It's, Ooh, you know what? It's, it's tough, because you'd have to be... I can't even think of something that's tough in a seven. A war machine's tough in a seven. I, wanted, I was looking at the steam tank for the st Empire. Strength one missiles can't hurt war machines. <laughs> I think the steam tank might be toughness ten again. Oh, the steam tank could be pretty high toughness. Granted, you might you might look at the chart and be like, oh, you know, six don't always work. I don't almost never come up. Maybe there's some spell combination against some magic upgrade combination that increases the toughness of something. But no, I sorry. Don't the steam tank is toughness seven. With 10 wounds. So, strength 1 can't hurt the steam tank. Or I think strength 1 right now. Anything modified down to strength 1 couldn't hurt it either. Or anything modified down to strength 1. But I don't think that would ever really come minus up. Minus 2 strength can, can be done. Okay, there you go. If you're strength 3 and you get 2 minus 2, 1 strength on yeah. you. Yeah. Can't hurt a steam tank. That's fair. Too physically weak. Uh, the other big difference I noticed is uh, how armor saves work. Is uh, well, not how, They work the same, but it's... You, you, nothing in the game can have a better than two up armor save, no matter what. Uh, and the main thing is, you don't get armor saves for being mounted on like horses or wolves or boars anymore. So most knights these days have a three up armor yep. save. I immediately feel bad about that. Yeah. After playing our game, like now it's fine. It's probably for the best. Armor pen is lower as well, though, yeah. so it kind of makes up for that. It yeah. just means that you know, light armor and shield has a five up save. Not a, it's a reliable save. Uh, heavy armor shield even better. In you previous know? editions, uh, Warhammer was you know two up armor. Either you're godlike and you can't be killed, or they have enough strength to kill you that way. It, it matter. don't matter. It's strength seven or something like that. Now yeah. you're just taking more saves. Say you're always rolling yeah. saves. It yeah. felt like ah, oh, great weapons against light armor shield. You won't sure, but that's a great weapon, right? That's sure. the idea. Yeah, but or hopefully you kill them first. Oh, well, hopefully you kill them first because no step up. Yeah, but uh, yeah, armor saves are a lot better. It's uh, harder to get AP if you're strength four. The whole strength four, strength five, strength six contributing to your AP is gone. They got rid of that. I think that was too hard to balance. Because then, like, yeah. if, you're, if your warriors are chaos, then boom, uh, you put the uh, what's the what's the spell plus one strength and toughness uh, for the lore wild. Oh, a wild, wild form, wild form. Like that was a really nasty combo. They're AP two now, strength five and toughness five. I did not know how to feel about that when these things were coming out as leaks and stuff like that. But yeah. after like reading and then playing, I'm like, oh, I just really like it. Now, granted, that doesn't mean warriors of chaos don't have AP because all of the baseline strength four armies like Soros, chaos warriors. Uh, Tomb Guard, Grave they Guard. They have a rule. Correct. They have a rule that gives their hand weapon AP. Hand weapon. Which is important because if you're a Chaos Warrior, I think it's like a single hand weapon as well. So if you hold ensourceful weapons. Yes. And they, they, every army has like a random thing like Kopesh for Grave Guard or Tomb King. Obsidian Blades. Obsidian for, Blades for Source Warriors yeah. and all that. It just gives them hand weapons of AP 1. Now, if you have two hand weapons, it specifically says you no longer have the AP 1. Correct. Just your basic hand weapon. So. Hand um, some of these elite yeah. infantry type things that were the end all be all good line heavy infantry type things still have one AP. Which brings me to my next big change I'd like to talk about is all the weapons are vastly different. Mm. <laughs> uh, no, they still fundamentally, I shouldn't say vastly, they still fundamentally do the same thing, but how they work is different. Now, spears are pretty useful, 
Because Perry's gone. Perry's gone. So Perry's out of the game. Spears with a weapon again. So well, Spears, but you're paying, but because you always paid for Spears before, you're like, no why reason. am I paying for Spears? Yeah. I'm just gonna take the Perry. It's gonna be better defensively. Now Spears are an amazing defensive weapon because they increase your initiative. Hello, no step up, very big deal. Uh, and uh, but hand weapon and shield is just cheaper. And yeah. on some more elite units, you have a better save and you have your AP, which is nice. So the thing is, so talking about what those two things just talked about, you, yeah. I'll let you finish on the spears, but with my source warriors, I legitimately right now don't know if, uh, if I want to use hand weapons or spears. I don't, I wouldn't know. That. Uh, hand weapons are more aggressive with them. Things like that, they're going to be, that's a more aggressive unit. They're going to go fight the enemy. They're going to have a good save and have more AP, whereas the other guys are more defensive. They'll have more attacks, but they can't charge to get those more attacks. My prediction, the first round they and check me in six months to see if I agree with this, even though some of these units have extra AP in their hand weapons, I still think the spear is a better weapon, even on those units. Check me in six months, but I still think that it way. It could be. It could be. You'll lack the... It all, it, it's all situation-based. Yeah. Like, if you're fighting, like, a light armor shield unit, then sure, yeah, the extra attacks are way better. Although fighting something yeah. with the two of armor state, which is going to be very, very rare, I want the mostly. AP. You're going to want the AP Characters for sure. with magic items, because most characters can't just generically... Well, full plate armor can get you there. You'll probably want the AP... It, it all depends if you're charging or defending, right? I think a spear, no matter what, is always going to be better if you're not charging. Yes. Or if you're charging in. Well, even yeah. in our game uh, today, uh, I had pole arms, which are spears or halberds. You pick before the start of the combat. Mm -hmm. Even when I charged, I chose to take the shield, the, sh the yeah. spear, because I wanted the extra attack next turn. Yeah, well, because you are you have to make that decision the first round of combat, because they can't, like, middle combat, sheath their weapon and pull out another weapon. That combat has to break apart now, yeah. which is a possibility in the game. And then they can, then you can alter your weapons and whatnot. But everything's kind of different and uh, pretty fun to use. Everything has its purpose. Hand weapons well, are great with shields. There are thrusting spears and uh, throwing cap, spears and cast spears. And, and cap spears. Yeah. So uh, for infantry, thrusting spears are spears. However, when you get charged in the front, plus one initiative, which we forgot in our entire game. Yeah. Um, for throwing spears, they are basically the exact same. Need some. That sounds right. Uh, you know what? Check those drawers. Might be. Are you doing reviews? Yeah. So throwing spears are the exact same as uh, a regular spear with the opposite rule for the first round of combat. Because they're aggressive. So infantry there. with throwing spears, st they still use them for fighting, yeah. but they fight an extra rank on the first round of combat when they charge. It represents that throw. Yeah. Get that extra attack when they fight. It's an easy way of doing it without having to roll shooting attacks or whatever, right? Yeah. Can do cav? Any cab with throwing spears get like two? Oh, uh, yes, like there's, there's chaos cab with throwing spears. Like Marauder Horseman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, but they also get javelins, which are probably better. Uh, and then uh, regular spears are on the second, if so long as you didn't charge, you get an extra rank of attacks. Yep. Now, cavalry spears are just like we know them before uh, plus one strength, AP one on the charge. Yep. No, but on the second round of combat, they can fight in uh, two ranks. Yep, with, that's really good. Yeah. Because they, well, they lose all their punch initially, but they're no, still useful not, afterwards. There's yeah. not going to be a whole lot of cab with multiple ranks than spears, though. No, not really. Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, because you know, it'll like, be it'll be Tomb Kings and probably Warriors of Chaos. So the Warriors will have cheap and oh, like oh, because Marauder Horsemen. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because they're cheap enough to do it. They're lightly armored. They're not really that expensive, uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, war gear all around different. Great weapons are pretty much the same, except always strikes last and always strikes first is different. You just initial. All the special rules are different, in in like so many ways. So that's that'll be a major topic. Oh, no one knows about fla flails and and morning stars. Um, they're flails plus two strength, AP two or one. I think it's AP one. Flails are, ah, uh, might be AP2. I know Morningstars are AP1. What page are weapons? How many are? things have Morningstars, though? I was, I've seen that they had a differ, different stat for Morningstar, and I can't... But either way, uh, a Flail um, loses its strength bonus in the second round of combat, but not its AP. Oh, really? Yeah, well, what page are weapons on? Do you remember? Uh, they are... It's before special weapons, or special rules, right? Weapons are after all the... I look at the back of the book, but I'm tired of that. Combat weapons. It starts at 213. Uh, Morning Star, uh, the strength modifier, and yeah. the so flail is strength plus two, AP two requires two hands. A flail's strength modifier modifier applies only during the first round of combat. Yep, I can't wait to use those flagellants. Oh, they're always AP two. Yeah, always AP two. Always AP two plus one. I don't. Who has Morning Stars? I haven't seen one yet. Well, there's Morning Stars in the game. They're they're a flail that you, that aren't two handed, but they're plus one strength and plus one, and minus one AP instead of like. Plus two. And the same thing. Lose the strength bonus, but keep the AP. Keep the AP on the morning star. Yeah, halberds require. They're all the same. Plus one. See, a lot of the weapons have the AP built into them now. So no longer can you buff a unit with magic, get its strength higher, or through a magic spell or, or like a magic item or something, and then get more AP. But there are a couple of spells that actually give you AP. 
There will be, yeah. There absolutely. is. There yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord Lady has one, and oh, there's two more that have it. I can't remember. Yeah, so you could be like strength 10 with an AP1 weapon, and that's it. That's it. That's or it. AP no weapon. Yeah, or AP nothing. Yeah, you'll be <laughs> wounding on twos, but they're going to get their full save against you. It's just, it's just not breaking through the armor. But if it does hit just right, it'll kill the crap out of them. Not that there's instant death or anything like that. But yeah, weapons are massively different. I expect that one to be a little off-putting, the AP thing, but I like it because it makes armor saves relevant. Yeah. A lot of times playing older editions, the only thing that kept you with an armor save would have been a parry with the plus one save in the front. Or that's like it. Like I'm, you never get armor saves. I'm happy yeah. to have a five of armor save on infantry right now. A four of armor, armor save on infantry right now are so good. Yeah, four of armor save is strong as heck. That's like well, I mean, it it'll be there. It'll be relevant. Like, Black yeah. Orcs can get three of armor saves. Yeah, because they have full, full they, plate armor. They brought full plate armor back into the game. I don't have any shields in no. mine, so I'm not going to have it, but... Full plate kind of existed back in 5th, I think. Maybe 6th even, too. I can't remember. Well, there was yeah. uh, uh, Ironbrook had Gromrel armor, which gave them... Like, chaos Warriors had Chaos armor. Oh, that's armor. true, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if Empire Greatswords had... Oh, uh, Chaos plate. Warriors have heavy armor now? Yes. Chosen have... Um, chaos armor. Yeah. But Chaos Armor's no, no, full plate armor. Oh, they, have, they all oh, have Chaos Armor. Yeah, Chaos Armor's a ward save now. Chaos Armor is... Oh, we'll get to that review yeah, later. Yeah, we'll get to that <laughs> later, yeah. Chaos Armor's different. Full plate is just a four-up save, but if you have a shield, it's a three-up save. Ooh, and again, That's so good. That's very good. And parries are gone. Don't forget parries are gone. Um, uh, we talked about some of the stuff in the movement phase. Uh, they, the declared charges phase is no longer 8th eighth, eighth edition's way of doing it. You go back to 7th edition. I say 7th because like, it was the same at 5th, 6th, and 7th. You declare all your charges across the board. And then your enemy does their responses. Yeah. And then you resolve it all. Honestly, for the better. That's well, just better. You're not going to do the... It's so manipulative otherwise. I, I actually... Once I learned how you can manipulate an 8th edition, I just... It's such a sour taste in my mouth. It was the charge, hold. Okay, second unit charge, flee. Then you just waste the first charge. I'm like, oh, gosh. There's yeah. a bunch of... There's a, I, can, I can do a 30-minute video about why... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it gave... It, it just... It was like... I, uh, it's better now. It punished... It just punished new oh, players. Oh, but charging is also 2d6... Take the highest, adding your removal value. Yeah, so that's right from Armory's project. Yep. Right, yeah. Uh, they and they also have a mechanic in the in the game now where you can only declare a charge against a target that would be within your maximum charge range using the normal charge rules. Uh, there's some things that give you an addition to your maximum charge range, like Swift Stride, but it doesn't give you the. It's weird because it doesn't give you the max max. It gives you like the medium max. If you roll high enough, then you can like wheel more or whatever. It's weird, yeah, but it's uh, it's different. Mm, there's a lot of like small things. I don't know if they matter as much. Small things will come up throughout the games. We don't have to worry about those. Yeah. You have to do your fleeing units before other compulsory moves. That's kind of like the How same about this? Uh, I think we covered all those, right? I'm pretty sure. I'll give them a second. Um, but they're... Oh, there we go. Oh, there... That one? I technically cheated in our game a little, little minor one. I, I, I realized yeah. you can only do one maneuver per unit in the movement phase. I made a note of that. I forgot about that. So you can't like turn and then... Uh, wheel? And then start moving and wheel. Oh. Yeah. That's probably fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's no Swift, there's no Swift Reform anymore either in the game. We, um, That's gone. Swift, Swift Reform out of here. Get that garbage out of here. True. Yeah. So we, we, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, now you just have six maneuvers, but go ahead and say what... Uh, no, so we, we, we wrote down a bunch of things that we had questions like, how does this going to be handled? It needs to be fixed or routed, but eventually we figured out most, the most part. Yep. The answers were like, okay, we got the answers. A lot of it's just common is, sense, too. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything that we ultimately didn't know... That we have to when we go to a Games Workshop uh, next week, Zach. that we get to we have to ask them like, hey guys, what's this interpretation? Uh, well, I think the lands formation one's kind of a big one. That's more of a Bretonian thing. Uh, well, what rules was written, that one's clear. Yeah, but it feels kind of weird. Not it feels maybe bad for so the Bretonian player. The Bretonian but not lands really. formation is a wedge. Yeah. Um, the models on the flanks count as being in close uh, count as being in combat with a fighting rank of the enemy, uh, but. It's hard. You, they can't put any attacks on characters the front models in base contact with rules as written. <laughs> Which is probably the intent. It's hard to say. Yeah, the guy in the front can attack as a stands, champion or a impact character. Impact attacks can go on characters. That one, yeah, that was one of my two, yeah. Eighth edition had the same thing. It, that, was one of the, that was one of the things in the big errata yeah. that they got distributed like shooting. Right. right now, impact attacks are not distributed like shooting. They're, they're attacks. They're attacks at initial step 10. Yeah. And, if you're and stomps as well. Stomps as well. Yep. Yeah, so if you are. Running a chariot in, and you maximize your unit, and there's, there's so happens to be a character or a champion there. You can allocate the impact hits to them. Now, granted, those characters probably have like a, a regeneration, a ward sure. save, an armor save. They but might, they, they had that in eight. Had, yeah. So yeah. impact attacks and stomps are attacks at an issue of one and ten. 
But they don't really have AP unless they're a heavy chariot. They automatically now. hit. Yeah. So you can at least rely on your armor save a yep. little bit. But. Yeah. It's still something that I think. Behemoths have some AP. Yeah, behemoths have AP. Heavy chariots have AP. I don't think that. That practice rule... game, that's how I killed your rune priest with the stick it on horns on the impact yeah. decks. Wow. I probably would hope they eroded that out. You, do you want do you, yeah. do you want that eroded out? I do. Yeah. Okay. I'm a big fan of. I'm a big hero hammer guy, so I don't like the care. And they're not really that durable. They they can't make them super super durable. So I would feel bad if you have like a character you really like, and all of a sudden a cherry just runs them down. Now, granted, that's a realistic thing that could happen, obviously, but I think it would feel bad a little bit. What about Lookout Sir? Lookout Sir replied on any of those. I think Lookout Sir's only templates and uh, like eighth editions. I'm gonna double check variant. that. Double check that. All right, so Lucas Sir is shooting text only. It's not gonna apply there. So we have to. Oh, we're gonna ask if that's the intent or if that's gonna get FAQ'd. Just or like if it'll stick in the, it might stick in the game too. I don't think it. Comment I, below if you care about yeah. that. It's not gonna make or break the game. It might for some people. And like, again, if you're just playing with your friends casually on Visual. the weekends or whatever, you like, you be honest. Like, hey guys, I really. Most people are reasonable. I really don't like this rule. Can you please? Can we please not do that? Boom, and to, to explain this to people who've never played this game before, this video probably doesn't apply to you guys a lot, unfortunately. Impact attacks are when a big monster type thing with horns or a chariot charges into combat, it does impact attacks, usually D6 automatic hits, initiative 10. Um, in this edition, rules is written, you can apply them all to a single model or character. Yep. But in previous editions, it would be randomly hit on the rank and flank guys all the time. Yeah. And then stomp attacks are the monster doing a big stomp on the ground, like pounding the ground with their paws or whatever, yep. stomping things. In this edition, it's initiative one. Rules is written. You can put them all on a character. Yep, they're just attacks. But in previous editions, it would be also distributed randomly yeah. into the unit as if it was you know, shot with arrows or whatever. <laughs> uh, a couple of things to note about movement is uh, that I wanted to touch on that I forgot is uh, it's clean. The charging yeah. and all that's clean. Like yeah. there's no, no more can someone manipulate the board state to disallow a charge. That is all gone. There's no... If you're playing with your friends and you figure out, like, I don't think I could charge here, as long as you have the movement to do it after declaring a charge, you're good to go. There is some way, shape, or form to make it happen. No more ego block. No more ego blocking. No more little tiny screening units stopping things from charging. You like, charge multiple units with one unit. Correct. You do like even two things there. You charge with both. They'll close the door to you. There's like there's an answer to everything. It's amazing. Uh, it's also kind of without being complicated. It's kind of intimidating looking, but it, it's because it's a lot of pages. But it, all those pages are. Just representing the different weird outcomes. They used to have those back in the older books. Yep. And then they kind of got rid of those. I generally yeah. don't know if we had an advantage reading this because we had other experience or we had a disadvantage reading this with other experience. Uh, probably a little bit of both. Know. Probably a little bit of both, <laughs> realistically, there. And uh, the big thing with charging from 8th edition is it's the older edition variant of doing it. You when you're, when you're charging to the enemy unit, say you charge a 7, and you're going a straight line, and that line is 7, you're good to go. But if they're off to the side a little bit, and you, you're allowed to do one wheel when you charge, like before, that wheel costs movement, though. That, and that does make calculating how far you have to charge difficult, but it's a good thing, I think, because it's, it, well, it's a good and bad thing, because it stops those weird zany charges, which aren't a bad thing, but it grounds the game to, like, skeletons aren't going to charge 16 inches at the enemy it, anymore it, across it, the board, it right? It does yeah. make Cav a little bit more appealing. Cav is a lot more powerful, yeah. But infantry far. grinds for a while, yes. right? So Cav is going to die to infantry, but inf Cav can break infantry too. It's like, yep. no, I think every unit has a use, and the charge is definitely more restrictive than 8, but all in a good way. Yes, because like this unit charging, this unit in 8th edition would have been like a 3-inch charge, no yeah. problem at all. But this is like like a 6 or 7-inch charge, because you have to pay, unless you clip the corner, that closing the door is free, the uh, line of the enemy is Now, we've seen that almost every other edition, to be honest yeah, with you, yeah. except that's, for 8th edition. That's how charging always worked, uh, except 5th had a weird restriction where you had to so wheel first. You yeah. have to get closer with your yes. infantry to declare charges yep. than in 8th edition, where you could charge 60-inch cross table yep. and, and make it. And there's pre-measuring in the game, if anyone's worried about that, that is all in the game. I think the game is better with pre-measuring, because there's less like annoying things. You can always impose that rule with your friends later on when you're more comfortable with the game. Now, if this is your first edition, uh, ignore everything we just said. All the all your charging stuff will feel appropriately yes. spaced this, for you. It'll actually feel it'll feel you wouldn't even know what we're talking about. A lot a lot of the stuff is for the veterans of eighth edition mostly. These are the changes from in fact this game is gonna feel more familiar to anyone who's played back in seventh so and all that basically, stuff. Basically yeah. um in in for you new guys, if your movement is this far, uh charging about this far, that makes sense to you, right? Yeah. It used to be you move this far and you could charge this far. Yeah, you could charge 
Anywhere between <laughs> like that's gone <laughs> six to sixteen inches, like on a moving yeah. four unit, right? Yeah. Now it's you go up to ten yeah. if you're lucky. <laughs> Cav can charge. I'm sorry, infantry can charge this far. Cav can charge this far. In old editions, infantry can charge this far, and Cav can charge this far. <laughs> infantry were too easy keeping up with Cav with charges. I like to say it's steadfast is gone, but it's kind of technically there in a much better way. Yeah, uh, steadfast is gone, but much there in a different way. You know what? Watch the battery report yeah. to understand that because that actually might sound like a negative until you understand the way combat is actually working. It's actually quite, I think, a positive. Um, There's like a lot of little things. I don't know how important that, that, oh, those time. are. More, those are more for me before I record yeah. a game. I'm like, oh, these are different. These are different. But it's like some of the, those are the big changes we're talking about. We're those talking. are some of the biggest changes. Absolutely. Uh, and then another cool, fun change. Very minor, but I think it's a neat little addition. Uh, stand and shoot as a reaction contributes to combat resolution. Oh, that was a big one. That was a big deal in our little test. And game. I like Absolutely. that one. Stand and shoot applies yep. to combat resolution. Oh, but like, stand and shoot can't panic you. Yeah, you can't panic. So you don't panic anymore in the charge if, phase. If, three, yeah. if five knights charge tw uh, ten crossbows and uh, two knights die... Previous editions, those knights take a panic check right there before they finish the charge. Yep. But now, no, it just counts as combat res. Those crossbowmen get too much I'd rather res. panic and run away yeah, than yeah, go yeah. in minus two combat res. Absolutely. But hey, that's really good for dwarf players. Yep. When they, they have dwarven crafted weapons, they don't, I, I think they ignore the stand issue penalty. Yep. And they're they're like a dwarf warrior with a ranged weapon. So they're just a good, just as good of a warrior as like uh, all the rest of the line. It's like, you want to charge my thunderers or corollars? Well, eat this, eat this. And then there's like plus three to my combat res. And now, oh, I'm a dwarf. On top of it, it's hilariously effective. Uh, to give us a, a little bit of a spoiler, it, it wasn't recorded, so you'll never see it. But it was a Stegodon charging Quarrelers. I got lucky, and I did like th two wounds on the way in, or three wounds on the way in with Quarrelers, because I rolled armor veins. Three. It was three, so he's down to two wounds, I think. I didn't do any damage to him in combat, yeah. but because of the three combat res, and the banner and the you know, rank. It was hilarious. That was also where we learned that I can impact back your character. I lost my rune. <laughs> I lost my rune priest. Oh, rune smith. It was rune smith. Yeah, I lost him. Like that's kind of sad. But the quarrelers did great. He he lost the combat. He passed his break check, but he had to give ground. I had to give ground. So and I had so, to move back two inches. And then the quarrelers were able to restrain the follow up and stay where they were, and then just bam, <laughs> shot him down. So at that moment, Luca is forced to follow up and get back into combat with me, unless he. Restrains. Passes yeah. a leadership nine test. Obviously, he passed. He restrained, and now he's two inches away from me. Just staring at this poor thing. He put it down. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very. I felt like an. You need sixes too. Yeah, it felt like an ignominious end for him. But those sixes were armor bane, so it's like if I wound you, you get no armor yeah. save. I also. Well, the crossbows yeah. were already armor bane something. Armor bane one or two. The crossbows are armor bane two, but no AP at all. Yeah, and you yeah. had a character that gave armor bane two. So you're a oh, and the sixes were like AP. That was AP so four. redundant. It was so pointless yeah. to put him in there. I didn't because we didn't, I was still used to the runesmiths giving armor piercing, oh, but one. That, <laughs> but that would only have affected melee attacks. Yeah. Now it gives armor bane, which does work on range attacks, but it's only sixes to wound. It's not a static thing all the time. So if you roll well, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Right? It's one of those. Like that's there's there's like a million other minor changes, but they're so small. Well. And that, right. that all depends on you, the viewer, I suppose. But they're so small, they won't interrupt your game if you miss them. There'll be weekly battle reports for you to, You'll be, to watch. Um, is there any more you want to cover before I ask the, one, the final question to you? You, you, you uh, asked me the final question. I said, oh, weapon skill chart. I kind of like that. Oh, okay. You can hit on twos now if you have enough high... Do you remember how uh, a lot of people are grumbling about the weapon skill chart? It's very... I can't think of the word I want. Elegant. I like it. If, if the enemy's weapon skill historically was double yours plus one... You would hit them on fives. Now the same is finally true for them hitting you. They hit you on twos. Weapon skill five hits weapon skill two on twos. Weapon skill two hits weapon skill five on fives. Yeah. It was always weird that they didn't do that, but now they do do that. Yeah. There's no sixes. There's no ones. Other than negatives to hit and all that stuff. But uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't care about Yeah, no, I like it. I will say I like it. I, I'm indifferent. Uh, you know what? One more thing I want to talk about. Special yeah. rules. They're all pretty much different. There's four I really want oh, yeah. to talk about. Yeah, uh, there's one I want to talk about. Uh, regeneration. That's the one. Uh, is amazing, but also bad. It's great. Uh, <laughs> so you can you do your armor save, you do your reward save, and now you finally again do a regeneration save afterwards, which is always the case. 8th edition got rid of that. But if you regenerate a wound in combat, you're still 
messed up gory and torn to pieces you heal it but the guy beside you seen that happen and it still messes up with the combat res because he's like i don't like what i just seen over there any wounds saved by regeneration still count for combat res. which is going to be hard to remember but it's important to remember because the combat res is still and big. here's the thing flaming attacks no longer negate rege regeneration unless the, the the unit with regeneration also has the flammable special role it's this whole horrible I don't like it. It is what it is. It's this weird triangle. Orcing Goblin specials. Trolls have flammable and regeneration. So flaming attacks will stop them from regenerating. Yep. But all undead have regeneration, six plus. But no oh, flammable. But no flammable. So yep. it's a good way to, I guess, identify. Like, why do the trolls hate flaming attacks so much to kill the regen? I don't they, get it. What's I the, don't know. They actually, I don't know. So I get, like, why a zombie wouldn't care about being fire. They have fire. true regeneration and undead are oh, maybe, re re maybe with it, magic. It's like magic, not a natural thing, maybe. I don't know. I'm sure you guys know more about it than I do. But maybe that makes sense that a living troll will have flammable and regeneration, whereas like a zombie doesn't care about it as much. It's less magic. I don't a know. zombie on fire is still a zombie on that's fire. Just, that's how they wrote it, and that's how I accept it. I guess so, yeah. I don't, whatever, that's that's his own thing. Stubborn got nerfed into the ground, thank God. Uh, yeah. stu stubborn is no longer. You just roll your leadership every time, no matter what. Now it is once per game. Dude, the first time, sort of, Every sort of stubborn. <laughs> yeah. The first time you have to do a break check... You can, I think. No, all... first you. Uh, sorry, only the first time. No, only the first. Only the first time you do it, you have to remember you're stubborn. And instead of rolling, I think you just fall back in good order. Instead, yeah. it might be. It might be like if you fail, you fall back. But it's the first time. No, you, you can choose not to roll and do that. You have well, to stubborn is uh, yeah. the first test you have to make. But I mean, like maybe the first test you have to make is not that big a deal anyway. So that's the thing, right? So like, ideally, you're stubborn. The only time stubborn is going to be relevant is the first time. You take a break check, you lost by like 10 or something. <laughs> but something still, you wild. have to roll naturally over your... You have to roll over your thing anyways. So yeah. yeah like just, a, a stubborn the, dwarf don't care as much as a stubborn um, peasant. No, peasants are leadership seven. That's not terrible. Yeah. A stubborn goblin will probably use it every time. Even a stubborn dwarf has to use it every time anyway. Yeah. It's just good to have it. It just guarantees your first break check is going to be tame. You're not dying on your first yeah. break check because you're stubborn. So it was regen uh, and uh, stubborn I want to talk about. And there was... Crap, there's two more I wanted to talk about. I think I have them on my phone here on the list. So I'll see if I can find it for you. Terror! Terror and Fear. That's what it was. Terror and Fear. Psychology. So Terror is really, really good. You still force the enemy to take a, a leadership check when you declare a charge with them as Terror. And if they, pa if they fail, they flee. If they pass, everything's good. Uh, but the new thing about Terror is if you win a combat and you cause Terror, you reduce their uh, bravery by one. Which is very big with how breaking Huge. works. Huge. Because break checks modify the die roll, and then you check your what your leadership characteristic is. Terror actually modifies the leadership characteristic, yep. making it so things are more likely to break so a, a dwarf, or fall back in good order. Dwarf losing yeah. to terror. Oh, more, more breaking, more breaking. Dwarf anything. losing to terror was on leadership eight, which means that they rolled nine plus, they're running Instead running. Instead of falling well, back in good order. What yeah. you kind of glossed over was um, when you get charged by terror, you do a test. If you fail, you have to flee. Yeah. Whereas everything else that panics you, yeah. if you're above half, you just fall back in good order. Correct. This, no matter how, you can be full strength, you're fleeing. Fleeing, no matter terror what. Terror is nice. And the way fear works, they they didn't make it as oppressive as the older editions, but they made it more relevant than 8th edition, which is probably where they want to be. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you check every round of combat like you did in 8th edition, except you can't reroll with the BSB. You can reroll it if you're a veteran. Or you're immune to it if you're if you have immune to psychology, which is great because that you know veterans that's more interaction. Rule. Veterans are a rule you can, a lot of units can purchase, but not that many. Yeah, only most things that would make sense to be veterans can be veterans. Yeah. Uh, they get to reroll it, but you're negative one to hit the thing that causes fear. But fear is only relevant if the unit that causes fear outnumbers the enemy that has to uh, take the fear check. And then they have it defensively. If the enemy wants mm. to charge you and you cause fear, the enemy that wants to charge you has to do a fear check. Like old editions, as long as you outnumber them. And if they fail their fear check, they fail their charge. They stay right there. They don't move at all. They're too afraid to commit to the charge. One more thing, too. Um, you're familiar with Empire, the parent and detachment unit special rule. Yeah. That's a core rule in the game. Now. Every Well, not everyone, but a lot of things. A lot of things that. have it. Like, Tomb Kings can do it now. Tomb Kings uh, skeletons are parent, or sorry, uh, what are they called? Uh, detachments and regiments. Yeah, so uh, to, uh, skeletons are regiments, archers are detachments. You don't, you don't have to be, but they can be. Yep. Hyle, spearmen are regiments, uh, archers are detachments. Yep. They work just like pre so the, uh, if you're a detachment, you have to be half the size or less of the parent unit. Yep. And you can either counter charge or, or stand, stand and shoot, shoot for, for them, the unit. Which is good because combat is for the bows. See, that was, that was one of my questions. I don't know if they're, because they're a different unit, not part of the combat. I don't know if their stand and shoot contributes to the combat res over here. They stand and shoot for them. They can't, oh, they do? That would make sense, too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reread that. I was, I was on the page. But then, like, Tomb Guard can be a detachment, a re regimental unit, and you can have skeleton warriors be a detachment unit to help uh, break uh, 
like a 15-man brick of skeleton warriors could counter charge, and maybe they get in the flank or something, and then they could disrupt the enemy flanks. But then no one really wants to charge Tomb Guard anyway, so it's not really going to matter that much. But yeah, cool things like that. There's also a lot of other changes to pretty much every special rule in the game, uh, but they didn't stand out as much. And now there's a lot of special rules for things like you're drilled, you can redress your ranks before you move. Uh, oh gosh, there's like a million other special rules in there. There's a lot of special rules. Poison's the same. I'm sad about that, but whatever, it's fine. Never liked poison, but... Oh, but you have to, you have to deploy within three inches of the parent unit. Yeah, yeah, you have to deploy near the parent unit and all that. The regimental units and special rules is actually like two pages of rules, because it's kind of a, a complicated thing. Uh, there is... There are so many random tiny little ambushers are a lot more reasonable now. You can use breath weapons every turn, but because you don't fully hit models, you only partially hit models, that's why it's a balance there. You have special rules that represent uh, what formation you go in, counter charges in the game. That's an amazing rule for cavalry. You have chariot runners. That's a weird rule. I'll probably never use that. Uh, ooh, one nice thing about some of the missile weapons in the game, line of sight heavily restricts shooting in this game, but they made stand and shoot mover fire weapons, that's out of the game. So if you're a handgun or a crossbow or a thunderer, you can, it's, I think it's called cumbersome. Ponderous? It might be ponderous. It's not cumbersome. But effectively, they, it's a, moving and shooting is negative two instead of negative one. So, but you can still move and shoot your ponderous weapons, but it's just kind of hard to hit with them. Uh, there is evasive. Extra, extra attacks is awesome too, because now if you have extra attacks as a special rule, you just get to attack with whatever that weird weapon Standing is. Standing and shoot is on the back of the book. Of course, yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Santa shoots a reaction. I don't know if it would, I don't think it would work because the, it's like the other. Unit I, I, I think, I th I'm gonna, my gut says it does. Oh, one big change fly X. Not everything moves fly 10 yeah. or anything. Like Army's project, certain things fly really fast, like fly 10, and you can, you know, march and go fly 20, or some things fly 7 because they're like maybe a little bigger or slower or not as fast as something else. That was a great change. I kind of hated fly. Fly 10, 8th edition's fly. It was a little, I think it was a little too powerful. But well, then we played 5th edition, it was like 24 inch fly. It was nuts. Uh, Frenzy's kind of the same in a bad way, in the best kind of way. Hatred. There's, I don't like the how to rule too much because it's a little weird. Explain that. I don't like yeah. that either. Uh, I think this was more of a typo, but the, the Kemri and Moor Sphinx is a great example. You'll have Tomb Guard in the top, their weapon skills. And the Stegodon. And the Stegodon. Oh, Skinks. That's even, you know, we'll use the Stegodon. A much more familiar one. It's the big Triceratops of the Lizardmen. It's got Skinks in the Howda. They're weapon skill 2. And the Stegodon is probably weapon skill 4. Mm -hmm. And um, when the, the Howda rule simply says, like, when they all attack, they attack the enemy. The Skinks use a weapon skill 2. And the Stegodon uses weapon skill 4. But when they're being attacked, use the weapon skill of the guys up top. They're weapon skill 2. So it's like super easy to hit a Stegodon because you're technically attacking the Skinks. I feel like that one is a little iffy. That one will probably get eroded away, but... Where does this say uh, Stegodon shoot gives you combat res? Uh, it's in there. Uh, you know what? I'll look for it. All right. It took us uh, quite a while no, to we, find it. We found it. We found it. We found it's it. No it's definitely there. It's on page 151 when you get your rule book. I think it says it... in the one corner. I think it's, it's so easy to miss. I think it says it before that, too, because... I it looked everywhere else before that. It might. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, standing and shoot causes combat res. It's right yeah. there, 151 at least. Remember that. We're going to... I can't wait for um, six months from now when we're trying to find this again. We oh, turn God. the camera off and both look for a while. I think... Uh, and, like, reading it, it... You... I think the detachment would help the regiment out with that. This oh, no, I would, I would say it's definitely. Yeah. Because on one hand, it says the first unit has to choose it, but then again, other words, if the, if the unit lost any wounds due to a stand and shoot reaction, which that unit technically did, uh, it would suffer combat res. In other words, here's the last sentence. In other words, each wound mm -hmm. enemy side lost this turn yep. due to a stand and shoot charge reaction or during combat phase is counted as worth one call. Yeah, that works, for me. That works for me. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, standing and shooting. That was, there was a couple, I was just kind of bombing through the special rules, but they're not like, they're not fancy. It's like, as you get the book, you read through the book, just look through the special rules. They're all fundamentally different yeah. uh, in a lot of ways. Oh, oh it's fine. We figure that out. That's for later. Uh, and the, uh, as for missions and stuff and playing the game, the same standard missions are there. They work a little differently. Yeah. It's actually kind of fun because they look like the old 6th edition art for them. They have the, little like narrative attached to them too. So every, there's six missions and they all have a narrative mission tied to them, which slightly change how they play. But for the most part, if you play them as a generic version, then they're going to be very familiar to the 8th edition missions, except Watchtower is way more manageable because it doesn't have to be a Watchtower. You could choose any of the special terrain features or make it a King of the Hill match. 
And it doesn't win you the game. It gives you like an extra 200 victory points. So I wanted to wrap this up with like a question like, what do you foresee how this game is going to go? What do you, what do you, your prediction for this one? For me, I, I'm going to, the only thing I want to say is, I think this is going to be on average a harder game to teach somebody to get into than a modern games workshop game. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But easier than any fantasy game has been in the past. I think, like, no matter what, this is going to be... You could you could play 100 games of fantasy. And this is off-putting to some people, but, like, your 100, 101th game of fantasy, you're still opening the rule book to check things out. That's Yeah, that's going to happen. That's going to happen, no matter what you... We you, have you, a flammable hero for that. But. Yeah, we got a flammable hero for that. Like, no matter what, you could be confident with the rules and just play without looking up the rule book, but you're going to miss a lot of things, no matter how... Because you'll... One thing to never do is get, like, stuck in your own head that, like, this is how a rule works, and then not look it up anymore. Right? It's always good to challenge that. Now, granted, again, your own personal play group, if you all play the same way, we all play the same way. But if it feels a little strong, maybe you should consider looking I'll it up. I'll tell you this. Yeah. I, I've been, well, you as well. I've been recording Warhammer Fantasy Battles battle reports for a decade. I've played people from literally all over the world. Yeah. Never once have I had one person come in and actually, um, like, th there, there was a rule they were doing wrong consistently out their place. Right, yeah. Us too. I'm not saying just oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are, th this is a convoluted game. It's meant for fun. You're going to get things wrong. Yeah. This, is, this is definitely one of those games you're not supposed to... Like, people took fantasy seriously back in the day because that's all that was there to take. Like, a lot of this game is out of your control. It's meant to be fun, meant to be goofy, uh, and you're meant to not really play the same thing over and over and over again because you win with it. You know, try and, like... The goal is to have fun. Like, all the other war games, even 40K and Age of Sigmar are trying to promote fun, but a lot of people get stuck on the... Well, I can control this. I can control that. I can control. I can. You can control so much of the game. I wouldn't change it for anything. I'll yeah. Like it. I'll this, like is, it is. this is. This is. Hey, it's 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 okay for your unit to break and run away, even if it costs five hundred points. That's the goal of on, the game. On the plus yeah. side, all the janky shenanigans things in Eighth Edition that if you mastered, you can be a master at this game. That's all. Out of they the don't game. apply anymore. Yeah, those those are gone. Those are out <laughs> of the game. Those should have never been in the game to begin with. They were. It's only because Eighth Edition was like a complete I, rewrite of the I game. I suspect yeah. there's only going to be one learning curve on this one. Whereas Eighth Edition, you get to learn the game and then learn the game within the game. Yeah. This one is just learn all that. Sh all that shenanigans gone. There's. You're never going to come across someone angle shooting you in, uh, exactly. in the old world. If like, you understand yeah. what we're saying right now, that's a good thing. I hope you never have to understand. You that. never have to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, a lot of, or you have a really nice, cool chaos where you're there. It'd be a shame if I put an eagle right here and an eagle right here. And now you can't do nothing. And now you're now your five hundred point five thousand point unit can't move or play the game anymore because I. Just manipulated the rules for fun for me, if you want to call that fun. I keep going back to that because that was like that I'm was, sure we'll find something. That eventually. was a big offender back. That was in the, the day. that was yeah. probably the worst one. Yeah. Oh, I'll, we'll find something uh, eventually that's like, oh, this is a very powerful little yep. manu uh, manipulation of the rules. But we'll see what happens. Our our eagle skirmisher is closed or open order. Not even, don't even can't even remember right now. That's fair. Don't oh. we check for you? Nah, it's all okay. good. I hope the skirmisher. <laughs> Fighting ranks are in the game. Don't manipulate them though. They're probably gonna get eroded. I forgot that we forgot to talk about fighting ranks. Talking, what was the fighting rank thing? Oh no, we're not talking about that. Yeah, no, don't you dare bring <laughs> I, that. I'm not putting if that. Anybody in the ever? If anybody ever tries that, no, no. So that was that that comes up. That was a rule that was technically always wrong with fantasy because you could do that in every edition. People just chose not to because they're not jerks. The zombies that would. Yeah, my whole line of zombies across the board who are going to reform into a unit now that they moved up. So basically, get the, out of here. the entire fighting rank fights with one attack. So there's nothing to say you can't make a unit of 100 malls in one rank. And have 100 attacks. Yeah. It's like Except you, for if you try it, I'm just like, I'm not even going to tell you to take off, off the table. I'm just going to leave the room. Yeah, we tell, we tell <laughs> those people to kindly pack up and leave. That is not an acceptable. And I hope that they don't have to errata fighting rank. Because fighting rank is a very good rule in the game. Yeah. It represents a lot of good things to the game. And it gives you that wraparound mechanic without having to deal with the wraparound mechanic they used to have. Jeez. And it just as long as people aren't jerks, we, can get, we get to keep our nice things as long as people don't want to manipulate them. Get that crap out of here. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. There will be plenty more to watch upcoming and plenty more already on the channel to watch if you haven't already done so. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's really helpful for the channel. Comment below. Engage with Algorithmo. Helps with the channel a whole bunch. And think about joining the channel. There is a join button right next to the subscribe button. So I know you already clicked that button. Uh, learn about everything you get from becoming a channel member. Access to Discord and a bunch of other extra videos. We're going to think of uh, some people over here scrolling by. These are the Rock Jocks and Peak Supporters. They're higher tier channel members that uh, they do a lot to help this channel keep it going. Can't do without each and every one of these people over here. Super appreciate them all. See you in the next one, guys. Happy Wargaming.